What if I told you this player made the NFL with just one hand? Well, his name is Shaquem Griffin, and he was the first player in NFL history to be drafted without a hand. To figure out how he went from unwanted in high school to a defensive player of the year, we have to go back to 1995, when Shaquem was born with two hands. Sort of. You see, the umbilical cord had been wrapped around Griffin's wrist, which cut off circulation in his hand. Because of this, it was never able to fully grow. He had fingers on this hand, but they weren't developed and were mostly just tissue. This forced a young Shaquem to live in severe pain. But then, one night, he decided he couldn't deal with it anymore. Four-year-old Shaquem went to the kitchen and attempted to cut his fingers off with a knife. Luckily, his mom got there before he did, and the very very next morning, she brought him to get his hand amputated. Once the hand was removed, Shaquem's pain was finally gone, and he didn't waste any time getting back to doing what he loved. Me, I, I was playing football the next day. I had my hand amputated, and my mom was like, do not go outside and get the bandage dirty. You gotta make sure you heal. And I said, yes, ma'am, and I came home and got in trouble because my, my bandage was dirty. <laughs> Shaquem was always outside playing football with his twin brother, Shaquille. The two were inseparable. At just eight years old, the brothers made a pact that they would stay together forever, always playing on the same football team, even once they made it to the NFL. The twins' father saw how serious his sons were about football, so he did everything in his power to help them be great. In the family's garage, he built custom equipment that allowed Shaquem to lift weights just like his brother, and by the time the two were in middle school, he was putting them through workouts five days a week. As high schoolers, both Shaquem and Shaquille dominated on the gridiron and were rated as three-star recruits. However, there was a problem. College coaches were only offering Shaquille scholarships, not Shaquem. They didn't believe a player with just one hand could succeed at the college level. It had never been done before. Shaquille received offers from dozens of powerhouse programs like FSU, Florida, and Miami, but he turned them all down since they weren't willing to give his brother a scholarship too. Shaquille wasn't going to break the pact he made with his brother at eight years old. So anytime a team tried to recruit him, he said there was no chance he would go there unless they offered Shaquem too. Finally, a school offered both the twins a scholarship, UCF, and that's where they committed to play. But when they arrived on campus, things couldn't have gone more differently for the twins. Shaquille immediately got playing time as a freshman, while Shaquem spent the first year on the bench as a redshirt. The next season, Shaquille became a starter, while Shaquem yet again rode the bench as a scout team player. Shaquem soon realized the only reason UCF offered him was so they could land his brother. The summer before their junior year, things got even worse. Head coach George O'Leary told Shaquille that his brother was holding him back from being great. So O'Leary sent Shaquem back home while Shaquille was forced to stay on campus for summer workouts. While back home, Shaquem was working two jobs, towing trucks for his father's company from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., then going to clean office buildings from 8 p.m. to midnight. One day, Shaquem went to campus to visit his brother. The head coach saw a picture of the two together and told Shaquille if he saw Shaquem on campus again, he would call the police to report trespassing and take away his scholarship. Shaquille then said, if you take his scholarship, you can take mine too, and quit the team. The next day, the coach came to his senses and told them they can both stay and keep their scholarships. Luckily for Shaquem, O'Leary resigned after the team started that season 0-8. In an off-season practice, Griffin caught the attention of UCF's new head coach, Scott Frost. Frost knew immediately that Shaquem needed to be playing and not on the bench. So entering 2016, his senior season, Shaquem was named one of the team's starting linebackers. After four years, Shaquille and Shaquem were finally back on the field together. In the first game of the season, Shaquem showed his coach that he made the right choice starting him. He recorded six total tackles, which was the most any player had in the game, a sack, a deflected pass, and even a forced fumble. His best game of the year was at the end of October versus Houston. In that one, he led his team with 14 total tackles, 
two and a half sacks, an interception, and a fumble recovery. Shaquem continued to dominate as the season went on. He finished the year with 92 total tackles, 11 and a half sacks, one interception, and two forced fumbles, which resulted in him being named the AAC Defensive Player of the Year. Out of the hundreds of defensive players in college football, Shaquem's 11 and a half sacks were the 11th most. He had more sacks that season than many future NFL stars like Miles Garrett, Brian Burns, Hassan Reddick, Bradley Chubb, and more. Following that season, Shaquille declared for the NFL draft and was selected in the third round by the Seahawks. For the first time in their lives, the brothers were now separated. Shaquem had one final year of eligibility left at UCF. He couldn't afford to have a bad season or his dream of making it to the NFL would be over. So once again, Shaquem balled out and led his team to an undefeated season. In the Peach Bowl versus Auburn, Griffin recorded 12 tackles and one and a half sacks and was named the game's defensive MVP. Soon after, he declared for the 2018 NFL Draft, but a few weeks later, there was a problem. He didn't receive an invite to the NFL Combine. The Combine plays a crucial role in when players get drafted. With every NFL team's most important decision makers there, it would have been the ideal opportunity for Shaquem to show teams why they should draft him. However, after an outstanding performance at the Senior Bowl, Griffin got a late invitation to the Combine. And once he stepped on the field there, he did something no one saw coming. He ran the 40-yard dash in 4.38 seconds, the fastest time ever for a linebacker. To show you just how fast he was, let's compare his time to some other NFL stars that play wide receiver, one of the positions that requires the most speed in the league. Shaquem ran a faster 40 than Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, Stefan Diggs, Debo Samuel, Amon Ross St. Brown, and a lot more. But the 40-yard dash wasn't the only drill he shocked the world with. At the bench press drill, he benched 225 pounds 20 times with a prosthetic on his arm. This was more than many other players could do with two hands. When draft day arrived, Shaquem didn't hear his name called on day one, which wasn't a huge deal because he wasn't projected to be a first round pick. But then when multiple rounds came and went on day two and he didn't hear his name called, he started to break down. Every NFL team was passing on him over and over again. The draft was now on its final day. This was the last chance Shaquem had to be selected. While he was in the bathroom, his brother Shaquille saw his phone ringing. The call was coming from an area code he knew. So he ran to the bathroom, pushed the door open, and told Shaquem he needed to answer the phone immediately. On the other side of the call was the Seattle Seahawks, informing Shaquem they would be drafting him in the fifth round with the 141st overall pick. The pack the twins made at just eight years old had now come true. The two were going to be playing on the same team in the NFL. The odds Shaquem beat were incredible. Only 1.6% of college football players make it to the NFL. And out of all 32 teams in the league, the one his brother was on decided to draft him. As a rookie, Shaquem played in all 16 games for the Seahawks and was even a starter for one of them. His second season in the league, he played in all 16 games yet again, but was mostly used on special teams. However, that year in a divisional round playoff game versus the Packers, Griffin got some snaps at linebacker. With just minutes remaining in a one-score game, Shaquem came up clutch and took down Aaron Rodgers for the first sack of his NFL career. Of course, his brother Shaquille was right there next to him to celebrate. The following year, 2020, Griffin recorded another sack along with a few tackles, but was released at the end of the season. Entering 2021, he signed a one-year deal with the Dolphins, but was unfortunately cut before the start of the regular season. After that, Shaquem decided to retire and work with the NFL Legends community, which is a 
group of former players that mentor current players in the league. Shaquem's goal is to now help and inspire others. He's a motivational speaker and has published a book with his brother. He's also working with the prosthetic company SmartArm to make prosthetics more accessible for those who can't afford them. Shaquem Griffin's career showed so many people that they can do what others say is impossible. He was and still is truly an inspiration to millions. I just don't want people to, to tell me can't do things. Shaquem, I mean, more so for us, maybe his parents, is really an inspiration because he proves that you can. If you're in the mood to hear another inspirational story about an NFL player, check out this video on Puka Nakua and all he had to overcome to make it to the pros. I mean, this guy has become one of my favorite players in the league. He's just so smiley, just so happy, such a positive guy. 